This is Witchspace News for Friday the 30th of August 2019 I'm Commander Burr. In this weeks news ...there's a new kid on the block or is there? Frontier gives some more details on how carriers will work and that dreadful German man is being reckless with your rebuys again. Remember to hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon to get a notification next time we upload a new video. You can also come and join us on the Burr Pit Discord server. This is where we organise all our outings and community events. And if you want to help support the work of this channel you can also join us on Patreon. Links to both of those as well as all our social media feeds and the Burr Pit community news email address are in the description below. A new Thargoid ship variant appeared in the galaxy this week, was sort of killed and then promptly disappeared again. The Orthrus variant of the familiar Thargoid Death Daisy was discovered making brief appearances above Professor Palin's old abandoned research institute in the Maya system in what appears to be a scripted sequence rather than a dynamically involving encounter the ship could be seen screaming away from the base going straight up very very fast and waking away in typical Thargoid fashion. Too fast for commanders to catch or so it appears to have been designed at least. Suffice to say within a few hours of the ship variant being discovered commanders from all over the galaxy began streaming to the site trying to get a glimpse of the thing but also trying to stop it and engage it. With varying degrees of success the mysterious and elusive ship was sat upon, blocked, rammed, scanned and sampled gifting some anomalous internal module readings as well as surface iconography. Eventually the possibly somewhat overconfident Thargoid ship met Commander Tado Chip however. Upon exiting his terminal glide from orbital cruise Tado rammed the unfortunate Terra Triffid with his AX fitted crate and began plapping away at the beasts 5 hearts while boosting the now terrified panic pansy into the ground. The murder flower tried to move upwards, Tado Chip stayed locked to its nose pushing downward and plapping at it. Using a not insignificant amount of skill the valiant but slightly unhinged T-Chip manoeuvred his ship around each of the hearts in turn whilst simultaneously keeping the horror weed firmly in its place. The alien spawned meanie greeny wasn't firing back and there was only one way this was going to go. Upon taking the final heart out the ship let rip its customary moo of defeat, succumbed to the gravity well of the planet and then made explosion noises but then it didn't actually explode. After the news and video broke of Tado's terminal interference with the would be runaway laser lily it seems as though the encounter was rapidly pulled from the game. Suffice to say it's extremely unlikely that that particular encounter was working as intended which does call into question some if not all of the anomalous observations commanders made of the ship before it was unceremoniously yanked away. We're going to go into the details of the ships encounter with a little more depth in our sister show The Thargoid Report later today but it feels like this was a hint at some story movement that perhaps didn't quite go to plan but it is at least a teaser for what we can expect in the future. Not least of which is that the ship is clearly leaving Palin's base in a hurry and multiple reports have it being fired upon by Thargoid scouts as it left. Has Palin used captured and recovered Thargoid technology to create a human Thargoid hybrid ship? Is this mysterious vessel some sort of Palin spawned Frankengoid? Until the ship makes a return all the options are wide open but if it is a Frankengoid then Palin would do well to read up on Shelley's classic novel. That particular relationship didn't end well for the good doctor. Stephen Benedetti, one of Elite's community managers at Frontier took to the forums this week to answer some of the questions being multi cannoned at Frontier about personal fleet carriers since the first details of the player owned super ships were revealed at Gamescom. Whilst a lot of the questions answered don't offer new information and are just confirmation of what we already know there are a couple of nuggets in there that are new information and one piece of clarity that adds significant interest to the currently simmering carrier soup. Firstly here's what was new information from the post. In response to the question quote will a commanders fleet carrier persist when logging in and out unquote Stephen responded 
quote ...fleet carriers are persistent and will remain in the game regardless of whether or not the owner is online unquote. We took this to mean if you're not in the game your carrier still is and is available for others to use if you've granted them permission to do so Dependent on the carrier's functionality and features that we're still awaiting clarity on that adds a potentially huge level of strategic importance to your carrier, who has access to it and where you decide to park it. When asked quote, ...can fleet carriers jump into permit locked systems unquote, Stephen replied quote, ...no. Fleet carriers will not be able to jump into permit locked systems unquote. So we won't be seeing commander carrier invasions of Sol or Shinrata or player driven recreations of the Gnosis incident. At least not yet anyway. And importantly you can't hitch a ride on someone's carrier into a system you don't have access to. With regard to the clarity I mentioned earlier when asked quote, ...can carriers defend themselves unquote, Stephen responded with quote, they can defend themselves and other nearby ships." Unquote. Whilst not a specific slice of new information you can, I think, take that as confirmation that carriers can be attacked and we will see and be involved in fights around carriers and also that carriers will defend those who are allied with them. That is most definitely something I'm keen to see and take part in. The next update for Elite Dangerous has been confirmed for September the 18th. This is introduction of the ARC's in-game currency and livery system as well as the new commander player experience. Personal fleet carriers arrive in December, just 3 months later. There's a link to Stephen's full Q&A responses below. And you'll be pleased to know that's the end of me going quote unquote for the day. <clears throat> and finally that shocking German man and serial difficult individual Commander Primetime Casual has today announced that the 3rd Gravity Well Speed Flight Championships will be coming to a high G world near you very soon. Speed Bowl 3, the semi annual test of a pilot's skill, lunacy and credit balance will be rocketing past a silicate vapor geyser in the 61 Virginis system on the 9th and 10th of November. If you're unfamiliar with speed bowling it's one of the more extraordinary and dangerous things you can attempt in Elite Dangerous. In simple terms it involves dropping into the gravity well of a high G world in normal space and then exploiting a heady mix of gravity driven descent and ships upward thrust to speed around the curve of a planet in such a way that speeds in excess of 4000 meters per second become easily achievable. Then all you need to do is pass the designated finish line dangerously close to the surface and not pancake your ship into dust particles in the process. Anyone can do it, no engineering, special knowledge or expensive ships are needed, just drop and go. And probably rebuy let's be honest. Primetime has released a new trailer showing a sample of the horrific window scraping that occurred at last years tournament. Don't miss this. Speaking from personal experience, even just sitting on the finishing line and watching the unfortunate participants passing the post is a hell of a sight to behold. There's a link below to the official Speed Bowl 3 channels on the Burr Pit Discord to get you started. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then, 07 Commanders, follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.